Uh, I'm very pleased to be here and to see a lot of you in the audience. I recognize uh, some of you, and I hope to meet a lot of you uh, in the discussion afterwards. Uh, I put this disclaimer up because, I, as I confessed to JD, I thought that uh, I may have misread the instructions, and I thought it was part of the, uh, the speed dating agenda. So what we have here is uh, a lot of visuals, a lot of stuff uh, of print on the, sc on the screen that you can read that I won't read. And if I take less than nine seconds per slide, I think we can make it. Um, part of the uh, thing I get to enjoy is travel as part of curating. And uh, I was invited uh, to go to Vietnam to review uh, uh, contemporary art in North and South Vietnam as part of a Ford Foundation grant. And this is a, um, a shot from Ha Long Bay, which is outside of Hanoi. And as J.D. has already mentioned, I met uh, him through Ellen and David Levy's uh, salon in New York City. And also get to meet also the, uh, the wonderful list of people listed there as well. And so I've been part of several art and science organizations, starting up some and uh, being on the boards of some. Some of you are very familiar with ASCII, uh, Art Science uh, Collaborations Incorporated, uh, Art Flask that I actually started with, um, uh, Suzanne Anker, who's a chair at uh, SVA now, Wet Lab, and Art and Medicine, which is the most recent addition. And I'm glad to be back here in DC because I uh, talked to the Phillips Collection at the Krasno Institute as well. Uh, just several comments on my curatorial practice. This is very much a personal journey story rather than academic. Uh, so I see art as a way of introducing uh, science to young individuals, especially in minority groups. And also a way of looking at the world in a different way to arrange familiar things in a different array and a perspective to provoke new relationships, to provoke thinking about new relationships. And I'll get to the allosphere. This is another trip I was able to take to Rishikesh in India. Uh, there is an archive of work that I do. Each of these little uh, 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 cards uh, is an announcement card for them. I have others there of interest besides art and science. I do uh, some on subcultures. The one on the left had to do with uh, the freak desi in New York and Hong Kong had to do with the way Africa is viewed in Asia. And the one on the right, Red Beans and Rice in Atlanta, Georgia, had to do with the way that people of, uh, of uh, Asian heritage living in the South felt themselves very grounded as Southerners, identified as Southern so Southerners. So that the Red Beans and Rice was a great title for that. There's an ongoing career symbiosis. This is my trajectory. So I started off illustrating my grade school lists. As a medical uh, student, I was interested in anthropology and marine biology. Uh, took my training in areas uh, by design, uh, close to art centers of so Santa Fe and San Francisco. I finished up at UCSF studying allergy and immunology and practiced that for almost 20 years. Uh, becoming an art collector is a vicarious way of staying in the art world. Uh, as a curator of your own collection, undertook the ISP uh, training at uh, Whitney and uh, became a member of the art critics organization, ICA. And now uh, I'm writing fiction and nonfiction as well, and segue to research. My models, the pluripotential man or the Renaissance man, the barefoot Chinese doctor who digs ditches, delivers babies, and sets bones, and these qualities that I've listed here as well. I uh, have a good grounding in actually establishing health clinics in Hawaii. The Kukua Kalihi Valley is one that serves the immigrant families to Hawaii, which is still in existence. And Third Arm was one in Chinatown that served uh, immigrant Filipino uh, um, uh, men, primarily, in Chinatown. And then the experiences uh, listed below are those that I had in the South Pacific, the Southwest, Hawaii, um, and New Mexico. Uh, in June of this year, I combined an art and medicine in this 13-city tour. And here I'm being introduced to the Minister of Health in Tuzla, Bosnia, who are discussing the most urgent health issues in that. So I'm consulting with them and offering them medical advice on how to set up programs for them. Also, uh, part of the journey was to Beirut and Lebanon. We visited the refugee camps. And part of the uh, thing that shocked me, uh, having practiced in the US, is that there are certain diseases that are expensive to treat, so they go untested. They won't do any stool guaiacs, for example, for uh, screening for colon cancer. The stool guaiac is a, is a test for blood and, and stool. And they won't do it because if they discover it, they don't have the resources to take care of the patients. Big problem. 
Uh, combining the art component with this, there are high school students in Beirut who participated in a live video link and murals that were done. And this is the team. So the most frequently asked question is, you know, how do you bring these different opposing, contrasting career interests together? And you know, my, my glib answer is, well, curing and curating have the same root word to care for. So I care for patients, I care for artists, I care for art. Uh, but it also has a deeper meaning in terms of preventing physician burnout and combining my life interests. This is an actual quote from an email uh, uh, from a friend, a practicing physician in New York, where I had an office as well. And he says, you know, he's, there's too little joy. I needed to take a break. It's dropping out of medicine. So I decided to move upstream so I could reach more people. Um, and I felt that prevention, public health research, and other related fields would give me that opportunity. Uh, one of the exhibitions that I put together and a lecture is called Prometheus Frankenstein, which actually was, I didn't know at the time, was the subtitle for um, Shelley's uh, book. And uh, this was about physicians who uh, produced art. Some stayed in medicine and then others quit. Uh, one that you may recognize is Wolfgang Leib, who studied medicine but quit when he achieved his medical degree, saying that uh, now he was a true artist. Uh, relevant books uh, for me, How Doctors Think, uh, and I've highlighted the areas I want to point out, but uh, Atul Gawande also is another uh, author that, whose work I really admire. So, you know, talking about doctors' burnout, how people uh, deal with illness, how people diagnose illness, and how people make mistakes. And I was going to mention this uh, with, with, in the context of what David was showing in terms of the cancer. There's this wonderful book, and I'm not sure how many of you read it, The Emperor of All Maladies, which has to do with the, the history of cancer and cancer treatment. There are wonderful programs now in narrative medicine, such as this one at Columbia, uh, that teaches people to develop the capacity for attention, reflection, representation, affiliation with the patients and their colleagues. Uh, we all know that this is, well, maybe don't. 52nd anniversary of C.P. Snow's famous Two Cultures essays, where he lamented the great divide between uh, the science and the arts. And you probably know of Joan Allaire, who had this popular book called Proust was a Neuroscientist, and also who writes for Seed magazine. And these are his comments about the relevance of science and the arts. So when we talk about the convergent paths of creative and scientific inquiry, uh, some of the problems I have noticed is that, the, and you can read here as well, that artists working with the scientists sometimes feel subservient. Uh, they don't feel that they're on the same level of conversation with the scientists or just being an illustrator uh, for the scientist. But I, I just wanted to underscore the, the shared components of art and science, the, the wonderment, the experimentation, and the problem-solving things. And that's what challenges me about medicine as well. So let's bring the artists and scientists more in collaboration and true collaboration with dialogue, sharing of skills and knowledge and use of materials, et cetera. There's an exhibition, uh, actually a lecture that I gave at MoMA, along, uh, who was along with Oliver Sachs, who was part of the panel as well. And you can see the uh, parties who were uh, a part of that uh, presentation as well. So medical training has a, a very distinct component uh, in the um, arts and humanities. Here I've listed various medical institutions from Mount Sinai, NYU, University of Connecticut, and Cornell, all of which have a humanities component uh, to their training. Uh, it's an integral part of the medical training to see individuals outside of just the physical to also recognize the social, political, cultural contexts. These are two uh, um, to meetings that I help organize uh, uh, on an annual basis. MMVR stands for Medicine Meets Virtual Reality, and which we bring together as scientists, and I do an art salon to shake the scientists up to uh, have them think outside of the box. The one on the right has to do with ACHEMS, which is a, uh, a conference, and Smell and Taste, which is held in Florida. Um, and more recently, an upcoming uh, uh, Meeting also on the 9th through 11th of November in Germany about these issues we're talking about. So these are the tenets I, I go by in terms of a curatorial, what if and why not, to you know, bring the unexpected together, to zag instead of zig, and to make the familiar strange. Just uh, imagine that.
So what if art met rock and roll, met Peking opera? Well, they did. We did a Chinese biennial of dimensional calligraphy, and we had exactly that, and rock and roll band meeting Chinese uh, Peking opera. There's a saying in medicine, when you hear hoofbeats, think of horses, not zebras. But I think the role of the consultant is to actually hear the hoofbeats, think of the horse, but also think of the zebras. Because the consultant is uh, further down the assessment. And uh, if you think of things that other people haven't thought of, I think that is uh, the advantage of the consultant. So I lament with technology the diminishing power of the laying on of hands on actual patients. Listening, you probably wonder why the doctor is tapping on your right side or percussing the liver, um, using the same thing as when you look for a stud on the wall by tapping on it. Palpation, smelling, and even tasting. And even the sixth sense of a hunch or a gut feeling or intuition, which is a heightened index of suspicion. I think this is one reason the, uh, the uh, uh, TV uh, series House is uh, attractive to some people, because it, this guy thinks outside of the box, right? If you don't think about it or can't imagine, you can't include it in your differential diagnosis. One uh, example I usually like to point out is the chemist, uh, German chemist Kekulé, who said that he dreamt about this uh, conundrum about one carbon, one hydrogen structure uh, that people were not able to um, fathom until he had this dream about the Ouroboros, which is a snake that held its tail in its mouth and came up with the concept of the benzene ring, which solved the chemical structure problem. So this is the allosphere, which is uh, at UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara, which is actually an immersive visualization environment. You can read the rest of the text. But it's actually a structure in which you enter, and large uh, images are projected. So you can actually walk into a protein, look at a protein from the underside. And I think this uh, change in perspective, this type of curatorial premise that I like to use, uh, allows one to think outside of the box and actually gain new perspectives. <laughs>